Namaskar viewers, welcome to Sunset TV. This is Question Hour Plus and I am Rajiv Kumar Singh. Our show focuses on important questions related to issues raised by members during the Question Hour in both the Houses of Parliament. It was the 13th day of the winter session and it being Wednesday, questions from 11 different ministries are listed in the Rajya Sabha. Likewise, taking both starred and unstarred questions into account, on your screens are the names of 17 different ministries, departments queried in the lower house, the Lok Sabha on Wednesdays. In this program, we would be taking up questions from five different ministries. All the five names are displayed on your screens. In the Rajya Sabha, a question related to transformation through new educational policy was put up to the Ministry of Education. BJP member from Assam, Bhubaneshwar Kalita, asked about the plan of government to bring new educational policy to the people. He further wanted to know how government is planning to transform India into a vibrant knowledge society and global knowledge superpower through NEP, and whether any study was done on the impact of NEP in the northeastern region. Minister of Education Dharmendra Pradhan said there are almost 30 crore students in the country. There are 26 crore students in schools while 4 crore students are enrolled in higher education. NEP 2020 envisions an education system rooted in Indian ethos that contributes directly to transforming India, that is Bharat, sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all and thereby making India a global knowledge superpower. In order to achieve this, several initiatives have been taken by the central government, state and UT governments. Samagra Shikshai scheme has been fully aligned with the recommendation of NEP 2020 with a total financial outlay of more than 2,94,283 crore which includes a central share of more than 1,85,398 crore. The minister also informed that common university entrance tests CUET are conducted in 13 Indian languages to promote digital learning by leveraging technology at present 95 higher educational institutions are offering 1149 ODL programs and 66 HEIs are offering 371 online programs National Education Policy 2020 unequivocally endorses and envisions a substantial increase in public investment in education by both the central government and all state governments to reach 6% of GDP. As far as Ministry of Education is concerned, there has been increase in budget allocation from Rs 99,311 crore in 2020-21 to Rs 1,12,899 crore in 2023 24 which is around 13.68% increase. Several landmark initiatives have been taken under NEP 2020 for the transformation of education sector. The State Educational Achievement Survey by Parakh successfully conducted in November this year. This marks a significant achievement in the assessment of educational competencies among students at the block level in India at grades 3, 6 and 9. This extensive survey covered approximately 80 lakh students from 3 lakh schools at 5,917 blocks across the nation. PM Schools for Rising India PM Shri. This scheme is to prepare around 14,500 PM Shri schools in which every student feels welcomed and cared for, where a safe and stimulating learning environment exists. National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy, Nipun Bharat, for ensuring foundational literacy and numeracy by the end of Grade 3. Vidya Pravesh Guidelines for 3 months play-based school preparation module. PM eVidya to unify all efforts related to digital, online, on-air education. Revise regulation of ODL, online education permitting up to 
40% credits of courses using Swayam platform. 53 Indian Knowledge System Centers have been set up to catalyze original research, education and dissemination of IKS, of Indian Knowledge System. 88 high-end interdisciplinary research like ancient metallurgy, ancient town planning and water resource management, ancient Rasayan Shastra are undergoing. The NEP 2020 focuses on holistic and multidisciplinary education. Importance of early childhood care and education has been recognized. The NEP provides for flexibility and choice. There is emphasis on vocational education. The NEP recognizes the importance of technology in education and aims to leverage it. The policy proposes a shift from rote learning to competency-based assessment system. It promotes Indian languages while also encouraging internationalization of education by promoting collaborations. In the Lok Sabha, a question related to production of smartphones was asked to the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Dr. Ramapati Ram Tripathi, BJP member from Devariya, Uttar Pradesh, asked the Minister of Electronics and Information Technology the details of the current growth rate of the production of smartphones in the country, the details of the duration of PLI scheme for the production of smartphones. He also wanted to know whether the government plans to extend or revise the PLI scheme based on the performance, and also whether the government has taken any measures to expand and enhance network connectivity in rural areas to facilitate usage of smartphones. Answering the question, Minister of the State for Electronics and Information Technology, Rajiv Chandrasekhar said, Smartphones are a shining example of the rapid growth, significant investment and job creation. The mobile phone production has increased 18.5 times from Rs. 18,900 crore in 2014-15 to Rs. 3,50,000 crore in 2022-23. Further, the exports of mobile phone have grown 57.5 times from Rs. 1,566 crore in 2014-15 to Rs. 90,000 crore in 22-23. He also informed that mobile coverage for inhabited, uncovered villages is provided by government and the telecom service providers in a phased manner. The government has ongoing schemes under Universal Service Obligation Fund which will provide 4G mobile services in identified uncovered villages and locations which include 354 uncovered villages scheme. Under this scheme, villages of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttarakhand and other priority areas are included. Comprehensive Telecom Development Plan for Mobile Connectivity in the Northeastern Region Schemes for Providing Mobile Services in Aspirational Districts Scheme for Providing Mobile Services in Andaman and Nicobar Islands and 4G Saturation Scheme to provide 4G services in all identified uncovered villages across the country. India's remarkable strides in mobile manufacturing have positioned the country as a key player in the global technology landscape. The concerted efforts to promote indigenous production and create a conducive business environment are bearing fruit. Today, the telecom and allied industries are amongst the top employment generators in India. From just two mobile phone factories in 2014, India now has become the second largest mobile phone producer in the world. The target of the central government is to increase electronics manufacturing capacity to Rs 24 lakh crore by 2025-26, which will also help create over 10 lakh jobs. A big chunk of this is going to be in the smartphone manufacturing industry. India accounts for more than 30 million smartphone purchases every quarter, and this percentage keeps increasing several times a year. Another feather in India's cap is that during the first quarter of 2018, India became the world's fastest growing market for mobile applications. Strengthening the Make in India and Make for the World initiative, 
many world class renowned mobile companies have either shifted their manufacturing plants to India or are in the process of doing so. Government in the meanwhile has set the priorities. These include Production Linked Incentive Scheme PLI for large scale electronics manufacturing. The production of mobile phone has risen from about 6 crores in 2014-15 to approximately 32 crores in 2021-22. FDI on 100% under the automatic route is permitted for electronics manufacturing subject to applicable laws. Recently, 100 5G use case labs have been awarded to educational institutions across the country. 100 5G Labs initiative aims to develop 5G applications to foster innovation across socio-economic sectors and is a key step towards building a 6G ready ecosystem in the country. 7th edition of India Mobile Congress was organized in October this year. Events like India Mobile Congress strengthens India's position as developer, manufacturer and exporter of key cutting edge technologies. As we look towards the future, the sphere of mobile manufacturing in India holds immense potential for further growth and innovation with the government's continued support, advancements in technology and a burgeoning consumer market. India is poised to become a hub for cutting-edge mobile technology. In the Rajya Sabha, a question on funds allocated under Rural Livelihood Mission was asked. Dr. CM Ramesh, BJP member from Andhra Pradesh, asked the Minister of Rural Development whether government have introduced new schemes under the Rural Livelihood Mission in different states, the details thereof. The member also wanted to know the details of funds allocated to different states under the programs state-wise and the number of states which have utilized the allocated funds under the scheme and details of states where funds remain unutilized. Answering the question, Minister of State in the Ministry of Rural Development, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti said that no new scheme under Rural Livelihood Mission have been introduced. She provided the details of funds allocated, released and utilized statewide for the financial year 2023-24 up to 30th of November 2023. The data related to six states and UTs are on the screen. National Rural Economic Transformation Project NRETP commenced in the year 2019 and is being implemented in 13 high poverty states. The Ministry of Rural Development has adopted multi pronged strategies to improve the economic well being of people in rural areas, with the main focus on increasing livelihood opportunities, empowering rural women, providing social safety net, skilling of rural youth infrastructure development and more through its programs. In this regard, the government is implementing a number of targeted programs such as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Gramir, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana National Rural Livelihoods Mission, Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gramir Kaushalya Yojana and National Social Assistance Program. Department of Rural Development has set a target to reach 10 crore SHG DDs till December this year and make at least 2 crore DDs as Lakhpati DDs. Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has launched a national campaign Sangathan Se Samriddhi in this regard. Till February 2023, 8.93 crore women from rural households have been mobilized into 82.61 lakh self-help groups under Deendayal Antyodaya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission. These SHGs have been further federated into 4.82 lakh village organizations and 31,305 cluster level federations. To support the women producer, SHG members get better marketing access through aggregation and marketing 
401 farm women owned producer enterprise farmer producer organizations have been promoted under the nrlm of the 17 sustainable development goals set by the united nations sdg target 1.2 specifically aims at reducing at least half the proportion of men women and children of all ages living in poverty in all dimensions India has reported a steep decline in the number of multidimensionally poor from 24.85% to 14.96% between 2015-16 and 2019-21. This indicates that India is well on course to achieve the SDG target 1.2 much ahead of 2030. The estimates indicate that rural areas saw faster reduction in their multidimensional poverty index (MPI) value compared to urban areas. The incidence of poverty fell from 32.59% to 19.28% in rural areas compared to a decline from 8.65% to 5.27% in urban areas between 2015-16 and 2019-21. All this indicates that opportunities for rural livelihood has got better in India. Efforts to improve agricultural practices, access to credit and the adoption of technology have further bolstered rural livelihoods. While challenges persist, India's commitment to rural development underscores a determination to bridge the urban rural divide and create a more inclusive and prosperous nation. In the upper house your question was asked on vibrant village program VVP in Arunachal Pradesh Nabam Rebia BJP member from Arunachal Pradesh asked the Ministry of Home Affairs about the number of villages selected under the vibrant village program in Arunachal Pradesh in first phase The member also inquired about the number of villages which are unconnected and steps initiated to connect them The member also wanted to know whether all the villages under VVP are located on Indochina, Indo-Myanmar, Indo-Bhutan border in Arunachal Pradesh and if so the details thereof. In response to the query, Minister of State in the Ministry of Home Affairs Nisith Pramanik said that the vibrant villages program was approved on February 15, 2023. This government initiative is designed for the comprehensive development of villages situated in 46 blocks along the northern border covering 19 districts in the states of Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and the UT of Ladakh in a phased manner. Specifically, 455 villages in Arunachal Pradesh have been chosen for targeted development. Out of these 135 villages currently lack connectivity. To address this a detailed project report has been prepared outlining 105 road projects that aim to connect 125 of these unconnected villages however 10 villages are presently not under consideration due to issues related to land Vibrant Villages program initiated on February 15, 2023 marks a pivotal step towards the comprehensive development of villages and revolutionize the development landscape in 2967 identified villages across 46 blocks along the northern borders of Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Sikkim, Uttarakhand and Ladakh. Launched on April 10, 2023 at Kibutu, a border village in Arunachal Pradesh, the program adopts a mission mode approach and a multi-pronged strategy for comprehensive development. Covering a population of approximately 1.42 lakh, with the first phase targeting 662 villages, the initiative emphasizes vibrant village action plans created collaboratively by district administrations and gram panchayats ensuring no overlap with the border area development program the program includes both central sector schemes and centrally sponsored schemes focusing on key areas such as livelihood generation road connectivity housing village infrastructure renewable energy and telecom connectivity the objective is to bridge the funding gap in existing schemes and achieve 100% saturation in the identified villages 
providing incentives for residents to stay in the border areas. Conceived as an outcome-oriented initiative, the VVP incorporates three levels of indicators – village, household and individual beneficiary. The program unfolds in three phases with a strategic goal to halt migration from all villages along the entire northern border, promoting tourism and providing city-like facilities. The government has allocated a central contribution of Rs 4,800 crore for FY 2022-23 to 2025-26, including Rs 2,500 crore specifically for road connectivity. The program's 10 identified focus areas of intervention encompass economic growth, road connectivity, housing, energy, television and telecom connectivity, ecosystem regeneration, promotion of tourism and culture, financial inclusion, skill development and the development of cooperative societies for various livelihood opportunities. The Vibrant Villages program is poised to be a holistic and transformative initiative addressing the diverse needs of these border areas. In the Lok Sabha, a question related to startup ecosystem was asked. BJP member from Jhalawar, Bharan, Rajasthan, Dushyant Singh asked the Ministry of Commerce and Industry whether the ministry is planning to create single implementing body for the entire startup ecosystem. If so, the details thereof, whether the ministry is taking any endeavor to decentralize and extend the startup ecosystem beyond major districts that is, Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities of the country. If so, the details thereof along with the district-wise startups in the state of Rajasthan. And the details of the efforts being made by the ministry to expand the presence of agri-based startups. The Minister of State in the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Som Prakash, highlighted the government's commitment to fostering innovation, startups and investments through the Startup India Initiative. Launched with the aim of building a robust ecosystem, the initiative introduced a comprehensive action plan with the schemes and incentives to nurture a dynamic startup environment. The Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade DPIIT, oversees the implementation of the initiative and collaborates with relevant ministries and departments. As of October 31, 2023, close to 1,15,000 entities have been recognized as startups, with over 45% from Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. The initiative's inclusive measures span across states, union territories, cities, towns and rural areas. Notably, Rajasthan has 4,029 DPIIT recognized startups. The government has also focused on promoting startups in the agriculture sector, resulting in 6,224 recognized agriculture startups as of October 31, 2023. These concerted efforts underline the government's commitment to nurturing entrepreneurship across diverse sectors and geographical locations. The government launched the Startup India Initiative on January 16, 2016 with the aim of fostering innovation, supporting startups and encouraging private investments in the country's startup ecosystem. The Startup India Initiative, spanning five years, has witnessed a significant increase in the number of recognized startups. The number of entities recognized each year have been 8,634 in 2018, 11,279 in 2019, 14,498 in 2020, 20,046 in 2021, and 26,542 in 2022. The Startup India Initiative has implemented various programs to bolster the country's startup ecosystem. The Startup India Action Plan laid the foundation for government support, schemes, and incentives across areas like simplification, funding, and industry-academia partnerships. Notable schemes include the Fund of Funds for Startups FFS, with the corpus of Rs 10,000 crore aimed at meeting funding needs and catalyzing domestic capital. The Credit Guarantee Scheme for Startups CGSS, provides credit guarantees 
and over 50 regulatory reforms enhance ease of doing business. The government has implemented a series of initiatives to foster entrepreneurship in the northeastern states. The SN Startup Workshop Series, including Women for Startups Workshops, aimed to accelerate entrepreneurial drive, engaging over 11,000 stakeholders. The Northeast Region Entrepreneurship and Startup Summit, NERES, provided a platform for startups addressing challenges and fostering networks. Knowledge Exchange Workshops facilitated the sharing of best practices among states and UTs, promoting collaboration. International exposure visits enabled officials from Assam to learn from global ecosystems. The Startup India Yatra initiative reached over 6,600 individuals in Tier 2 and Tier 3 districts, extending incubation offers and funding support. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrated entrepreneurship in Meghalaya and Assam, featuring success stories and sensitizing startups. The incubator capacity building engagement in Mizoram further strengthened the startup ecosystem. These efforts collectively contribute to nurturing a vibrant entrepreneurial culture in the northeastern region. Let us now have a brief look at what apart from question hour took place in Parliament on Wednesday. The Lok Sabha on Wednesday passed three criminal law bills which seek to repeal and replace the Indian Penal Code, CRPC and Indian Evidence Act. The new bills, Bharti Nyaya Samhita, Bharti Nagrik Suraksha Samhita and Bharti Saksh Bill have been passed by the Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha on Wednesday also passed the Telecommunications Bill 2023. At around 2.30 p.m., Lok Sabha MPs C. Thomas of the Kerala Congress, Mani, and A. M. Arif of the CPIM were suspended for the winter session of Parliament for displaying placards and entering the well of the House. This takes the number of suspended MPs in the Lok Sabha to 97. So far, 143 opposition MPs have been suspended from the two Houses of Parliament. The Rajya Sabha on Wednesday returned two bills after consideration. The Central Goods and Services Tax Second Amendment Bill 2023 was returned after consideration. The Upper House also returned the Provisional Collection of Taxes Bill 2023 after consideration. That is all we have in Wednesday's Question Hour Plus. Thanks for your time. Keep watching Sunset TV. Namaskar.